um, I wouldn't say lecture, but conversation on clusters and ecosystems. And for that, uh, we have the pleasure of having Elin Hauge, hopefully I pronounced it well, and Navid Siet, so hopefully I also yes. pronounced it well. It's Siet. Um, <laughs> good. Who are co-founders and partners of Network Development Hub. Um, Elin is based in uh, Oslo, so, um, and Navid is based in Austria, in Klagenfurt. Yeah. So, uh, welcome. And, you know, just Let's get this going, and it would be great if you can share with us what is uh, Network Development Hub, and you know what what is the ecosystems the, the ecosystem that you have put together. Right. So the purpose of Network Development Hub is to put it short, to help tech startups and scale ups with international growth and expansion. Like the, that's the very core of it, and there's much more to it, of course. So the ecosystem we are working with contains of a lot of pieces and they are also moving, but we have the tech startups and scale-ups. We have the corporates and the governments that are the customers on the other hand. We have accelerators and incubators. Um, and let's not forget our affiliated advisors. Those are some of the main components in our ecosystem. Navi, do you want to help me? Yeah, in? absolutely. Thank you so much, uh, Roberto and uh, Christian for giving us this opportunity to um, speak at this event and share our journey with you all. Um, I guess, I mean, Ellen, it's, uh, it's fair to kind of take them back to the, to the journey of how NDA started. I guess, you know, uh, between Ellen and I, we bring about almost close to 50 years of corporate experience. Uh, working you know, globally and coming from management positions, we kind of felt the pain of you know, how startups and scale-ups get uh, kind of treated you know, by, the, by the corporates and the governments. Um, we, we, we kind of, being entrepreneurs ourselves, uh, you know, several times we feel the pain of the journey one startup or a scale-up has to go through, uh, finding the right uh, advisors, mentors, or the right investors. And I think that kind of gave us a bit of uh, an opportunity to kind of leave our existing corporate life uh, and embark into uh, the journey at NDH. Um, so, so it's not just helping the startups and scale up, right? I mean, Dr. Mai earlier, I mean, she pointed at a very uh, strategic point is to nurture uh, the individual that, that you want to work with. I mean, get to build their profile, get to build their confidence. And that's exactly where NDH comes in with our uh, respective experiences, respective, uh, you know, uh, kind of knowledge and the processes that we have gone through. We have a very strong belief at, uh, you know, between Ellen and I, uh, which also lucky enough, you know, we got the right uh, affiliated advisors that um, you, need to, you need to bring people on board to work with you who have gone through that journey of being either an entrepreneur or a startup or a scale up. Then they can relate to the kind of startups that we want to work with, the scale-ups that we want to work with. I guess it's, it's all about uh, creating that relationship, not only with the company, but also with the individual. So I guess, I mean, we have been lucky enough to find the right partners. I mean, one of them is Strategy Tools. Uh, we have been involved into some amazing exercises. Ellen has contributed in becoming certified on several programs. Um, but at the same time, I mean, we managed to bring in some top-notch uh, advisors from, from the Middle East, from Europe, from the sub-Saharan uh, you know, continent. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the affiliated network is expanding. So I guess, I mean, we are looking at a pretty, uh, you know, uh, extensive um, uh, elaboration <laughs> of the advisory network. That's, that's definitely very interesting. And can, can you expand a little bit for, for, further, sorry, on what you do? Um, where are those big ideas behind um, network development hub. Yeah, well, as Navid pointed out, when we both worked in the corporate world and we actually met when we were colleagues in one of these corporates, we saw that startups struggled to work 
with the large companies. And the large companies struggle to work with the startups. And it's just because they are on different planets in the way they work and they talk and interact. So we thought, well, we have one foot in each camp. And at the same time, we also know that a lot of these startups, they struggle with telling the stories to the market. And also when we say you help these companies expand internationally, it means to take companies, for example, from the Nordics to the Middle East, which brings in a new component of cultural gap. The business cultures are just different. I often use the example that I would call Norwegians, or I would explain them as elephants in a China store when we take them to the Middle East, right? So we really need to bridge this gap, the cultural gap. So when we start working with any scale up or startup, wherever they are from, the first thing we do is to really dig into how do they tell their story? What is the business model? What is their strategy? And here is where a lot of the strategy tools skill set comes in to play for, from our side, right? We might not use the canvases, but it's just the thinking about how does this business model, what, what does it look like? What is going to happen when they go internationally if they look for money, investments, but which most of them do? What kind of thinking do they have around the investments? And typically the answer is none, right? So we need to really do the process of helping them to understand, well, there's one step here and then there's another step and another step and where do you want to go and what kind of investors do we need and what kind of money? And then we do a lot on the communication side to actually help them tell their story. So we do on, a lot on the pitching. We help them really much on how, rebuilding their story basically. Also because they're going to a new market and we need to make sure that their story, their product market fit, is suitable for that new region. And then the other side of that, and then I'll send the ball to Narid because he is kind of the lead on actually taking the ball to the corporates and the governments. Narid, maybe you would like to share a bit of your perspectives around then what? How, what do we do? Yeah, I guess, uh, thank you, Ellen. I mean, that, that's a pretty you know, good, good explanation that you put together as to what we do in a nutshell. Um, Coming, coming from that you know, corporate background, I mean, having worked with customers across the continent, uh, you know, I mean, in the Middle East and Europe and the US, I mean, I, I was born and raised uh, you know, over there. So, I mean, I had a pretty good experience, you know, working in, in, in the US for a good 30 years. And then the remainder of, you know, uh, 15 years I spent in the Middle East uh, in different uh, areas. I mean, one of, one of them, you know, what kind of led me to creating one of the first uh, customer excellence academy, uh, which later on turned out to be an academy of excellence uh, in collaboration with Dubai government. And um, what, what, what I did, I mean, as a part of that uh, exercise, uh, which interestingly uh, kind of brings us to why Network Development Hub also kind of wants to bring in the global perspective to the hub, uh, is I managed to bring in, you know, the likes of uh, academia from different governments um, Just continue. No, okay. Sorry, it was my mistake. <laughs> Looper for, for So what we managed to do was to bring in the government, the industry, and the academia in order to create this academy. And this academy was purely built on real life experiences. So we focused on leadership, entrepreneurship, innovation, mentorship. And then, I mean, we created, I mean, uh, again, I mean, uh, what, what Dr. Mai just said uh, it kind of brings me back to the whole topic. We really took the time in nurturing, you know, the people who enrolled into the program. And that gave us a confidence that, I mean, by nurturing the right candidates and putting them in front of the corporates and then allowing those corporates to have them take on as an intern for a period of six to eight months, that one not only gave the locals, I mean, especially the Emiratis, the confidence to work in an international environment, but also it gave them an opportunity to come back and work with the government and become an ambassador uh, for that particular company that they work for. So in, in a way, I mean, we create a pretty you know, robust kind of a landscape where the nurturing process went through understanding uh, you know, um, different areas 
how we want to help uh, in nurturing the, the client, in this particular case, a, a candidate, an entrepreneur or a startup. And I think in, in the last one year that we have uh, gone through the NDA journey, we have been lucky enough to get some amazing customers. I mean, who we managed to not only take them across the borders, but we also managed to present them to real customers with real challenges. That itself, I mean, kind of, it's, it's, we kind of, we have, you know, we went through a process of breaking the barriers. I mean, normally when you are a startup, I mean, you get to spend time in the region that you operate with it. But we understood there are challenges that they have to address locally, but also think globally as well. So I think, I mean, uh, in, in, a, in a way, we would like to continue expanding our reach in different uh, you know, regions, uh, which we have already started doing that. I mean, where we are collaborating with innovation hubs, collaborating with accelerators and incubators across uh, borders like, I mean, in Europe, as well as in the Middle East. So um, we, we are looking forward to such kind of collaborations where we bring in uh, the right advisors and the mentors, I mean, who come from real life experiences to work with our startups and scale ups. And what, what kind of key factors or elements need to be considered in developing such an ecosystem? So we've been discussing a bit and actually between Navid and myself, we have been laughing a bit because obviously Navid and I come from two different business cultures, different parts of the world. We work very well together. Actually, we, have, we've, oh, we started a business together a year ago. We haven't actually met for two years and we speak every day. <laughs> Uh, but we also do realize that we do represent two very different business cultures. And that also mirrors our clients and their customers, right? Because when you go across and beyond borders, business cultures meet. And in the last year, we've all been on video, right? So the old saying that we need to meet face to face. Yeah, yeah, we, at some point we'll meet face to face, but we have actually managed to do this in a year without meeting physically, we've been on video. But there is a lot of this bridging that we actually need to help clients with and the customers. Now, clients, tech startups, customers, corporates. To really make them understand that decision-making processes are different. And, and just, it, I've been in the last few days, I've been thinking in a kind of two dimensions. So one is the relational versus transactional. And we know that different cultures have different, um, they, they have different balance between being transactional and relational. And when we work from the Nordics to the Middle East, we have kind of the extreme ends of those axes. Because the Nordics are typically very transactional, Middle Easterns are much more relational. Mm -hmm. If you're going to build an ecosystem, if you're transactional, you're going to work uphill. Because in building an ecosystem, you really need to focus more on the relationship. And the other dimension is if you have a short term and maybe egocentric perspective versus long term global perspective. Now, if you have a very transactional, short term, local perspective, you're going to struggle with building your ecosystem. And that's why sometimes we have, in fact, stepped aside from potential clients because we see that their way of thinking is too much me, myself, my company here and now short term. And that just doesn't work, right? Which means that we need to actually educate our clients in what it means to build a long-term relationship, which means how do we actually build an ecosystem? Because an ecosystem is not something you do just now to benefit yourself. It's an investment you need to make into something that is bigger than yourself, but you want to achieve something in the same direction. So we actually need to kind of train and help and teach our clients and our, the customers and all the different players. As Navid said, there are investors, there are accelerators, there are governments, there are academia, there's yeah, a whole lot of different players. And we really need to kind of navigate and make this landscape fit, which is not really done in a day. Yeah. <laughs> it, it takes quite a bit of work. I think one, one other element to add to that, uh, Ellen, is the way we look at 
creating a global ecosystem. Uh, I mean, again, um, when, when we when we thought of you know network development hub, I mean, we thought, I mean, you know, is is the purpose of this hub just to bring people together and you know have them communicate with each other? I mean, the purpose is more than that. Let's go beyond that. How do we make sure that the customers get access to not only our partners and advisors, but also like access to our customers as well? And I think, I mean, what, I mean, uh, Christian, Christian uh, would be a good, uh, you know, kind of a reference to that point. When, when we decided to bring in strategy, uh, you know, tools as a partner, I mean, we managed to bring all the advisors to get a perspective of, you know, what strategy tools is all about. I mean, the areas where it can help and how it can support with the vast, uh, you know, network of, uh, you know, people that's uh, within uh, strategy tools. So uh, I think, I mean, to us, it's, it's all about educating the, the, uh, the participants, you know, within the hub, but also going beyond that. So Arlene, what, how would you summarize, um, you know, these 15 minutes uh, where you have shared some, I find really amazing work and this idea of building, you know, from local international ecosystem into global ecosystem is, is, is quite ambitious. Right, so I'll try to summarize in three main points. So one thing, the first one is to be, to be clear about what you want to achieve in the long term. Because as somebody pointed out in the chat, so we, you cannot create an ecosystem or design an ecosystem, will, it will, it's there and it will evolve. But when bringing in the parties and working with them, you need to have some kind of direction for what you want to achieve. Otherwise you'll be running in all directions at the same time. So define a direction for what you want to achieve. And then there is something that Navid always says, never sell on the first call. If you want to build an ecosystem, you need to actually invest in the relationship because people buy from people. It's not a transaction. So use the meetings to get to know people. And then at some point, if it's relevant, you can get to the selling. And then of course, the third part of that is be curious about the pains and the drivers of the people in your ecosystem, because they're all people. They all have different drivers, different ambitions. And it's when you really understand these and you can tap into those and start connecting the dots, that's when you get your ecosystem to work in the direction you want it to work. <laughs> 